I start off examination of the cardiovascular system formally by examining the hands. Start with the right hand. I'm looking for petechiae and splinter hemorrhages in every nail bed, including the thumb. I'm looking at both hands. I'm also looking from the side for finger clubbing. And I turn the hands over. They're slight sweating. They're nice and pink. There's no suggestion of anemia or of cyanosis. And there's no evidence of Osler's nodes or Janeway's lesions, which can occur in infective endocarditis. The hands are normal. And then feel both radial pulses together in order to check that they're equal and synchronous. And then formally feel the right radial for rate and rhythm. With regard to the rate, if it's irregular, I count it for 30 seconds. If it's regular, I count it for 15 seconds. Mrs. Grogan has an irregular pulse. The rate is 88 beats per minute. The rhythm is irregular. Particularly with an irregular rhythm, it's totally irregular, we have to recognize that we're feeling the radial pulse rate and that may not be the same as the actual heart rate because some of the weaker beats may not be transmitted to the radial pulse. So we'll have to check the heart rate later by auscultation. Volume and character we cannot judge from the radial pulse. We'll have to examine a larger artery for that. First, however, I'd like to check for the presence of a muscle knock by elevating the arm and feeling this part of the arm with this part of my hand. A muscle knock occurs in severe aortic regurgitation when there's a water hammer pulse and in one or two other conditions as well. Now, Mrs. Grogan doesn't have a water hammer pulse and a muscle knock. If she had, then I would have felt a knocking sensation like that against my hand. I'd now like to palpate the brachial artery. I'm noting that there's bruising there, presumably from previous venipunctures. The brachial artery lies underneath the biceps aponeurosis and is easily felt with the right thumb or the left thumb or one finger. It's best not to use two fingers to feel a pulse character because one pulse wave may hit one finger, then a second finger, and this may be discerned as being a double impulse. The character is normal, and the volume is varying with the clinical atrial fibrillation, but is of good volume most of the time. I'd now like to take the blood pressure. It's important that the cuff is applied properly and we need to be sure that the brachial artery is in the middle of the cuff more or less. This of course is the balloon part and this is merely cloth and it's the balloon part that is important. The cuff size is also relevant. This cuff is large enough for Mrs. Grogan's arm. A plump person may need a broader cuff.